and now it's time to fly. As I was thinking about which of my six sermons to bring you today, <laughs> I asked Bukeka what she was going to sing. So notice my sermon title kind of matches, right? And I emailed Joe to tell him, just pick out some Easter songs. I'll just bring my Easter sermon. Because, you know, isn't it interesting that the two greatest stories ever told, the story of the birth, Christmas, and the story of the resurrection, that of Easter, are the greatest stories ever told, and yet we only tell them once a year. <laughs> let's affirm them more often, and let's take it inward and see what is being resurrected within us. Her words are perfect in that song that she's written. We can change our story at any given time. So let's look at what that means. This last week, I've had the privilege of being a co-host and at the Tulsa Unity for some monks that are tra traveling all over the, our country for a year on a world peace tour. And they are from India. They're Tibetan monks. I've sat with them in meditation several times this week. I've co-facilitated a couple of the sacred services. They've created a sand mandala at the um, Unity Church there, and it's huge. It takes up the entire stage, and they've been sitting in meditation creating this sand mandala that's colorful and bright, represents all the major and minor religions of the world with the symbol of peace in the center. And today, actually right at this very minute, they are doing what's called a dissolution service. All of the time and energy and hours that they have spent, one grain of sand at a time to create this masterpiece, will be swept up, dissolved, carried to the largest body of water that's closest to them in another sacred service, where they will offer that sand back to Mother Earth. Pretty amazing. And then they will get on a bus and go to their next city and do it all again. Over and over and over. And as I got to sit and watch them, one grain of sand at a time, it reminded me of the Easter story because that sand was a boulder, a stone at some point. And each time they would move that grain of sand, it reminded me of the stone that was rolled away from the tomb. You remember the Easter story, the crucifixion, the days waiting. And then the women went to prepare Jesus' body. And on their way there, they asked a very significant question. Who's going to roll the stone away for us? Pretty important question. Who's going to roll the stone away for us? What that means in metaphysics, that stone represents our limited belief system, our limited thoughts and beliefs within us. They might be thoughts of worry, anxiety, stress. And when the women asked, who's going to roll that away? That's significant in metaphysics because it means we often look outside of us for the help in moving our anxiety and worry and stress and fear. But really, it's the power and presence within us that has the power and presence to move that. That's what we understand as the resurrection story, transformation at its best. And how many times have you needed to roll a stone away in your life? a stone of worry or stress. You know, today's daily word matches wonderfully with the songs she just sang and the song Joe, songs Joe picked out. I usually ask Dee to share a daily word from past years. Today's daily word is today's daily word, which is pretty unusual for me. And it is all about my story. You see it on the front of cover of your program. And you know, the story that 
is happening in our lives is not just happening because of the circumstances and situations around us. We are the author of our story. Whatever story you're telling, you're writing that story according to the choices that you make. And when we want the direction of our path to change, we can make new choices and thereby creating new avenues of possibility and adventure. But what story is being propagated and per perpetuated in your individual life? Think about one aspect of your life, finances, relationship, career, family. Just choose one and feel your inner guidance. Is it a place of fear, of worry, of anxiety? Is that the stone that you're hoping will be rolled away? And what if it is? What is the story that you've been telling? Can you meet somebody for the first time, and when they ask you, share a little bit about your story, would you talk about that fear and anxiety and worry? Or would you tell a different story? Would you tell a story of your successes? of your hopes and dreams, one that comes inherently from the consciousness within us that is the life force of us. In unity, we know it as our second unity principle, that we are the very essence of that understanding, of that power, that presence that we call God. And we can tell the consciousness behind that or any story by the story that's told, can't we? We can tell the consciousness behind that. Have you have, do you have that friend who you call up and you accidentally say, how are you? And then you get an earful of how they are. <laughs> we all have that friend, right? And so you learn not to ask anymore, right? There is a wonderful little story about a man who was walking along his path one day and right in front of him, he noticed a cocoon that had fallen out of a tree and a butterfly was trying desperately to emerge from it. And he took a moment to kneel down beside it and watch the process. And he watched that butterfly struggle and suffer. There was just this little bitty tiny hole that this butterfly was trying to come up out of. And so, in this man's impatience and wanting to help, wanting to fix. He ran indoors and got his little pair of scissors and came back out, and he was just going to make that hole a little bigger. That man represents an enabler in our life, <laughs> right? Because what he didn't know, out of his kindness and haste, what he didn't understand was that the restriction and the struggle itself is what that butterfly needed. You see, when a butterfly emerges out of a cocoon, out of that tiny little hole, science tells us that it pushes, the contrast pushes all of the fluid out of its body and into its wings. And that's how they rise. When he cut that little hole to make it larger, the butterfly crawled out, but was fat and slimy and wet because none of the fluid was able to do what it was supposed to do. And so it couldn't fly. Imagine what might revolutionize our own personal Easter story, our own story of rising, our own story of emerging out of our cocoon, our own story of moving a stone of worry, anxiety, fear. Imagine what that would look like, what it would feel like. While I was sitting with the monks all week on a stage just like this in a unity church, I said a few words, and then I got to sit where you're sitting. That's very different for me. I'm usually from this perspective. And what I saw from your perspective was a half moon full of monks sitting in meditation, sand mandala in the center of them. We had hung a picture of the Dalai Lama for their benefit just above them. And then just above that was the wings, the unity wings that you see right here. And it reminded me that our Easter story in New Thought 
and higher consciousness is very different than mainstream Christianity. Because in mainstream Christianity, that would be a cross right there. But we are showing what Bukeka just talked about. The wings, the ability to fly or soar above all of that crucifixion and fear and worry and anxiety in our life. This morning I got up really early because, of course, I didn't have my sermon quite finished or started. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm going to tell the Easter story. Thank goodness I know this story. But I wonder what our co-founder in Unity, Charles Fillmore, said about it. So I remembered that I had read this in my seminary work. He actually preached an Easter Sunday service in 1914, and he said this, The life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is viewed and taught from two diametrically opposed standpoints. The first teaching and the most popular is that of the Orthodox Christian Church, that Jesus was the Son of God, that he was crucified, died, resurrected, and then ascended into heaven, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. The second other teaching of logic and truth is from the unorthodox understanding of Christianity, the mystics, those who see from that standpoint of logic. They teach that Jesus was crucified, that he died, that the life was then put out of his body, but he had developed that power which resides in every one of us until he resurrected that body, and that he then refined that body until it was made invisible from the perspective of sense. There are two great viewpoints, two great teachings, distinctly different. If you'll notice, one teaches man how to die. The other teaches man how to live. Which story are we telling each and every day of our life? When we focus on the resurrection, we study the life, the mind, the consciousness of who and what we are. Charles Fillmore also said, when you see yourself as a spiritual being and you affirm that spirituality, the whole substance of your body goes through an elevating process. You levitate. And I tell you, you can feel the power of the resurrection in any given moment, and you know that you are in eternal life. He called it heaven within. And we know what that means in unity. We know that Jesus himself talked about heaven, that he said it's in the midst of us. It's right here, right now, on this planet, in our life. And the kingdom is not this distant place outside of us or separate from us, but rather it's right here in the midst. And we sometimes become so entrenched in the story of suffering or fear or worry or anxiety that we forget the one who showed through demonstration, which, by the way, we are all co-creators, which means we are demonstrators. We are the author of any of our stories. When I think about the work I do as a transformational coach, I could be calling myself a resurrection coach. I just don't think it would go over well. <laughs> but that's what's happening, is that I am not there to fix the person on the couch. I am not there to have them change in any way. I'm there as their mirror. I'm there to let them tell their story and then to reflect back to them the story of truth, the story of life, the story through the eyes of their God, the story of source. Because we often tell our story from our very limited perspective, don't we? It's in the process, just like that butterfly in that cocoon, it's in the process of our becoming that we have to meet those old thoughts and old beliefs, even though they are limiting. Especially in those thoughts, we are then taught spiritual truth. We are taught mind action. And in spite of all the appearances or circumstances in our life, we can enter into that spiritual res resurrection, not confined just to the spiritual, but to everything, the body, the physical, the emotional, the mind, the behavioral actions. 
And that's really what the monks have taught me all week long as I've been with them. They shared their culture, we shared ours. And what I noticed is they sit in meditation differently than I do. They speak an entirely different language. It's been one heck of a week trying to communicate with eight monks who only talk Tibetan. And so as we tried to communicate, we got through every one of those conversations somehow. No one went hungry. No one lost sleep. We were talking the same language, one of peace, one of love, one of music. We are all speaking the same language. There's a saying that says, I asked for strength. God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom. God gave me problems in my life. I asked for courage, and God gave me obstacles to overcome. I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to watch. Maybe I received nothing I wanted, but indeed I received everything I needed. Each day holds that potential for a new chapter, a new story in our life, doesn't it? And your life is like this book, this ever unfolding story that presents new adventures, new possibilities at each and every turn of the page. Events and activities continue along, building upon the narrative of your life, including the struggle, including the suffering. And when you feel the need for order and calm, you have the consciousness of choice to turn your attention to order and calm, rather than giving your undivided attention to the stress, anxiety, and worry. Whatever direction your personal story takes, remember you are the co-creator, the co-author with spirit. What story are you telling? Would you like to tell a new story? Would you like to be like the phoenix and rise from that place? Would you like to roll away the stone of a limited belief so that ascension can be your destiny? Look at today's daily word on the front of your program. I am divinely inspired to create and live a full and abundant life. I am the author of my story. No matter what happens, I choose the meaning I give to events in my life. I see myself through divine perception. The scripture today says it all. It says, write your story and make it plain. Write your story, write the vision and make it simple. Tell it, because that's the story that the God of your understanding is telling, that the source of you is telling. And it is through our imagination, that spiritual power within us, that we can imagine what is the stone that is blocking us from our destiny, from our great life story. You know, the women got to the tomb of Jesus, and they did not have to move that stone. Most of the Gospels say there was an earthquake that moved it. There was something happening that was probably a feat. You've been through an earthquake? I live in Oklahoma. We have more than California now. It's in those moments that the earth shakes that that fear and anxiety and worry resonates all through us. That's what it means. And so sometimes it is those moments of stress that allow the stone to be rolled away if we can be there with it. It liberates and sets us free. And whatever blocks you have in your life can be rolled away, transformed. That's the promise of Easter, but it's also the promise of each and every new day that we have, each and every next breath that we take. Spiritual masters throughout history have demonstrated to us that action alone is not enough. I do not believe that Moses went to the mountaintop just to enjoy the view. I think that if we want a milk and honey reality, we have to transcend that wilderness consciousness and take the action to climb the mountain, to rise up in consciousness. And we do that by affirming our truth, not telling the story of suffering, not telling the story of whatever that block or that stone is in your life, not giving that any more attention, but to tell the story of the resurrection. Because what happens is, 
we know that when one climbs, you see. When one descends, you see no longer, but you know what the view looked like. And there is an art of conducting oneself in the lower region of our memory, of what one can see or has seen through that higher consciousness. And when you surrender every untruth, every aspect of lack, when you give up every limiting thought or belief that keeps you from truth and goodness happening, then you surrender unto the universal law that allows it to come, allows it to be, allows it to become. If you want a different story in your life, all you have to do is start telling a different story. Tell it of how you want it to be, of how you want it to feel. Are you appreciating and accepting and realizing your worth, or are you denying it? You know, Charles Fillmore also once said, there are opportunities everywhere, just as there always has been. Are we seeing them? Are we paying attention to them? Joseph Campbell said, as we return, as we descend from that mountaintop again, the key is then to live a balanced life between those two worlds, the higher and the lower, the spiritual and the materialistic. So, I think in this time of understanding that Easter is everywhere present, that Buddhism is probably what I'm going to choose to come back as in my next life. <laughs> because I watch these monks create an incredible work of art through that sand mandala. But more than that, I watch them co-create peace in every step that they took, in every breath that they took, in every person they encountered. And you'll remember that Charles Fillmore and other master teachers have all said the same thing. Everything is created twice, first in mind and then in the manifest world. And we, as human beings, carry with us all the scars and all the gifts of our past, don't we? Imagine just for a moment that on your path, this very captivating being crosses your path and asks you, who are you? Tell me your story. Which story are you going to tell? Now imagine that being who just crossed your path and asked you that is life itself. What story are you telling? I think when we finally get it that the universe is only always answering our vibration, our prayer, our intention, then we understand that if we are a victim to anything, if we are suffering in any area of our life, it's only because we have a haphazard offering of a vibration, that we are not in sync or in alignment with the truth of our being. Because the universe is going to conspire with you about anything, provided you are that vibrational match to it. You came to this church to this time and space, to that seat that you're sitting in. You came into this life experience, into this beingness as the very vibration of a higher power and presence, of a higher consciousness. And you are that consciousness. As our second unity principle says, you are the very essence of it. Therefore, you are the stream of it because it is not stagnant. And because you are that consciousness, when you feel anything other than that, when you feel anything other than that about yourself, whether it be an unworthiness or inadequacy or any conscious, consciousness of lack, that's the stone. That's the identity of the stone that wants desperately to be moved so that a resurrection, an ascension can happen. If you vibrate with that conviction, that all things are possible. I think that we are then able to rise to a higher and even our highest potential. It's possible that the circumstances and situations in our life can be transformed to that place of glory and grace, a feeling of appreciation and joy. 
Bukeka and I got in late last night, and we were talking just a moment about fear versus joy. And what I'm able to recognize is fear is how we are out of integrity with our soul. And we know that we are in integrity with our soul when we're in that place of joy. It's the emotional guidance system within us that's letting us know that. You are consciousness. And when you feel anything other than that about yourself, that's the stone. We close your eyes with me. Breathe that in for just a moment. Look at the stone in your life. Notice the story you're telling. And now notice the story that the higher consciousness of you has no doubt about. That there is a purpose for your existence. That you are an expression of the one true power and presence within the universe. And whether you call that God or Buddha, whether you call that intelligent life or omnipotent presence or divine love, may you know it is the one by whom you were created, for whom you were made, and to whom you belong. You came into this world and this expression of that one with a soul consciousness. You are a vessel of the infinite. And in miracles, which are just simply insights to the true nature of who and what you are, you can find that moment of grace and joy. And so it is. You know, life is just this big playground, isn't it? And we have lots of playmates. Those playmates are the universal creative principles that have always existed. And they don't have a to-do list. They don't have this need to fix us. They don't have this desire for us to be anything other than who and what we are, which is love. So, what's the story? Is it a fun story? Is it a joyous story? Is it a story in which you can experience that love, affirm that truth, celebrate that diversity, honor life? Bukeke is going to sing another song she wrote in just a moment. It's called All I Need to Know. And here's what I know for sure. That the will of God will never take you where the grace of, not, of God will not protect you. We say that in different language each and every week. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Everything that you are living is in response to the story you've been telling. So if you would like it to shift in any way, just begin to tell a new story. Tell a story of how you want it to be, how you want to feel. Tell it as a story of truth, because that's what transformation, just like that butterfly coming out of its chrysalis, because of the contrast of the struggle of the suffering from our perception, because of the stone that was rolled away from that tomb, we have the strength and the wisdom and the intention. And just like the phoenix, we can transcend from the ashes with an ability to fly. I think it's time. Namaste.